you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. As Rahm Emanuel famously said, never let a tragedy go to waste. Democrats in Maine are taking that to heart. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Farms, LLC. PAN Farms for NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfarmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like channel, like content, and what I do here, you can support me with the link. Everything is appreciated. And again, for my Connecticut residents, if you plan on getting your Connecticut pistol permit, please get that training done before July 1st, 2024. And I'm going to augment that language to state that I think you should turn your paperwork in before July 1st. If you have your permit, watch the expiration date. Do not let it expire. There is a link to the online renewal portal for the state of Connecticut for permits in the description box. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about this. And this is your typical cookie cutter response from Democrats every time we have a tragedy. The main lawmakers, Democrats, are of course pushing through a number of anti-gun bills in response to the shooting that happened there in Lewiston. And as you can imagine, it's the same basic language. We want a magazine ban. We want an assault weapons ban. We want waiting periods. But this is not unexpected because this has been the new grift when it comes to these kinds of things. And they don't necessarily have to happen in the state that they're pushing these laws through. If you remember here in Connecticut, HB 6667, they passed it by mentioning other shootings in other states. But I want to bring you in to here. Maine lawmakers hold hearings on gun control measures. Maine lawmakers are hearing from the public this week about legislation filed just days ago by Democrat legislators in response to last year's rampage in Lewiston. And the first of those hearings was held on Monday, according to the Lewiston Sun Journal. Now, this is actually from March 5th, so it would be that Monday. LD 2237, sponsored by House Speaker Rachel Talbot, Ross, Democrat, no surprise, would establish an Office of Violence Prevention and create a gun shop project in the State Department of Public Safety, according to the Portland Press-Herald. Talbot Ross wants to invest more than $2.5 million to improve the mental health crisis intervention capabilities, red flag laws, and another $9 million for six new mental health crisis receiving centers. It would also require the Commission of Public Safety to develop a plan to notify the public of active shooter incidents. Well, that would be a good thing. LD 2238, sponsored by State Senator Peggy Rotundo, Democrat, would establish a 72-hour waiting period on gun purchases by private citizens. The legislation is not without opposition. The Associated Press is reporting that State Senator Matt Harrington, a York Republican, asserted the majority of Democrats are pushing legislation that failed previously. Likewise, State Rep Donald Ardale, was quoted by WABI News contending the Lewiston mayhem was a failure of governance rather than existing law. If you remember, Robert Card, the shooter at Lewiston, had openly said that he was, he was having major mental issues. Let's just start with that. But he openly said he wanted to kill people. Maine already has what they call yellow flag laws in place. Under those yellow flag laws, he should have been flagged, but he was not which shows that these flag laws don't work unless you actually implement them. So he then, of course, got was released from his mental institution and went on his shooting spree. But WABI also reported that Ardell observed our yellow flag laws was in effect and simply not utilized. It was a tool in our law enforcement toolbox that simply was not taken out of the toolbox, much less used. The shooter in Lewiston gave ample warning as to what he intended to do and the government action to stop it was not initiated. This is not a legislative problem at all. It was an execution, or this was an execution problem. And the Sun Journal noted, Maine voters in 2016 rejected a universal background check for firearm purchases, and the legislature has rejected other gun control bills as recently as last year. 
The state has a long history and tradition of gun ownership and hunting, and the gun owners are resisting the proposed changes. Now, this is a little bit, of course, about the actual event, but the Lewiston killer, Robert Card, 40, was an army reservist who had been in a hospital in New York State earlier in the year. His rampage hit two Lewiston businesses, a bar and a bowling alley, both of which were gun-free zones. An intense man had followed until his body was found not far from the crime scenes. He had taken his own life. Now, the three-day waiting period will ostensibly allow for more extensive background check, which is nonsense. Okay, the background check is the background check. But the check that you get in the NICS system is the same one you're going to get. How does it facilitate making a person wait three days going to change what their background check is going to do? Remember, Robert Card passed the background check. But it's not clear whether such requirement would have prevented Lewiston shooting. The Sun Journal noted that gun control advocates have vowed to push for a ban on assault style semi-automatic weapons and large capacity magazines, which they've been trying to do for a long time. They're just once again using a tragedy to get the emotional boost that they need. It is a familiar demand from the gun prohibition lobby in several states, but two federal judges' challenges involving the Second Amendment Foundation, one in Illinois and the other in Maryland, have been referred to the Supreme Court for review. Should the court take one of the cases or consolidate them and ultimately rule that such bans are unconstitutional in the Second Amendment, it will nullify similar bans in other states and possibly render any ban in Maine likewise moot. And I've argued that quite a bit. It would behoove the American people and the courts if the Supreme Court would say, OK, we see a number of these cases coming to us. We're going to consolidate all of them into one ruling because they're all based on the same language. It would just it just makes sense. The Maine legislature is also looking at an amended version of LD 2086 sponsored by Senator Ann Carney, I assume she's a Democrat, which would amend the law governing disposition of forfeited firearms and clamp down on the possession of firearms with devices that work like machine guns. According to the Maine Senate Democrats website, this translates to a ban on so-called bump stocks. The bump stocks are banned anyway. But a hearing on this bill is scheduled Tuesday. Remember, this is for March 5th at 11.30 a.m. before the Health and Human Services Committee. Why is it before the Health and Human Services Committee? Because once again, they're trying to make that association and tie gun shootings, specifically gun violence, with mental health and the health of the public. But legislature is scheduled to adjourn on April 17th, which means lawmakers have about six weeks to move the bills, and there is pressure from gun control groups to get the measures to Governor Janet Mills' desk. The governor has already presented her gun control package, as noted by the Associated Press, includes strengthening the state's extreme risk protection order, ERPO law, and require background checks to advertise private sale of firearms. I'm going to go ahead and if you want to read the bill, it's actually in. I'll leave the link to it so you can go ahead and look through it if you plan on doing so. But you're going to notice right away, it, like I said, it's a cookie cutter version, but let's come out of that. Exploiting tragedy and specific tragedy is not new. We have seen it over and over and over again. Connecticut, California, Maryland, it just goes on and on. Illinois, and 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 I, I really want to call out Governor Prisker. I, I mean, I think he's such a hypocrite. It took what happened at Highland Park for him to demand an assault weapons ban when for decades we have watched the violence in the inner city, specifically Chicago, for decades, people are being killed left and right. But what happened at Highland Park is the reason why we need an assault weapons ban. I'm sorry, that's damn racist as far as I'm concerned. You know, what, a bunch of white people got to be killed en masse for you to finally say, oh, we need an assault weapons ban, which has done nothing for the face of crime, specifically in Chicago. But that's how it works, because there's emotional fodder that can be gained from exploiting tragedies. And as I said before, like they did in Connecticut, they used shootings in other states as the emotional push or the emotional, you know, backbone to push through a bill that has absolutely nothing and has done nothing to reduce crime. It, it's just ridiculous. But I was expecting this because as soon as it happened, within days, within days, people were always screaming, we need an assault weapons ban. And as I said, it's exploiting specific tragedies. They ignored what happened in Waukesha. They ignored what happened in Idaho. Four students were stabbed to death, one person, one knife. Those were ignored. 
And I'm gonna go even further and say that it has to be a very specific narrative when it comes to these things. Think about what happened out there. Nashville, the transgender shooter went into a Christian school and killed a number of ch uh, children and adults. We don't talk about that either. Biden didn't even bother to go down to Tennessee. That shows you that this is not about your safety. It never has been, never will be. It is about them and their agenda. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.